Hi, this is IK Handel. Welcome back to part 13 in the rigging tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering the limb library and some other bits and bobs. The limb library, I personally have not used it a great deal, but having spent a lot of time working on it this week for this video, uh, it's a very useful feature and one that I'm going to be using a lot more now that I understand the ins and outs of it. Like you, I've probably uh, watched the videos that come with the manual. There are two on the limb library. But it doesn't go into as much depth as hopefully I'll be able to. So if I can give you a background understanding of actually what's happening, you'll be able to use it and build up a nice collection of limbs that you can attach to just about any skeleton. Let's just turn on snapping. I've got my joint placement on the ground and I've set my default limit angles at zero for the minute. So let's just build a bug basic rig snap to the ground. At the minute TruSpace 7.6 considers this to be a skeleton. When I finish this that's it in its entirety. This is a skeleton. TruSpace has no way of knowing is this a biped, a quadruped, an arm. As far as it's concerned, it's a skeleton. And down here you'll see it even calls it a skeleton. It would call it a skeleton whether it had arms and legs coming off it or whatever. It regards it as a skeleton. Now the difference between a skeleton and a limb is a skeleton. A skeleton is the entirety which may include limbs like arms and legs. This might not seem important at the start, but actually I've discovered that it is. Let's just shift that out of the way. Alright, continuing on with this. Let's make, uh, let's assume this is a bit of a basic spine. And let's make an arm. It's out of proportion, I'm just giving you the idea. Now, according to the manual and the video, you can add limbs by holding down control. And in the <coughs> build skeleton tool, clicking on the joint where the limb starts. So let me do that. So I'm holding down control, left mouse click and drag over to another joint. Now I want you to see what's happened. Because this skeleton as it was had no offshoots, i.e. limbs, apart from the other one, what I've actually said is, from this joint that I've dragged onto, copy the limb that I had well, held my left mouse button and dragged from. So really, this, this is now a skeleton in its entirety. And it doesn't have two arms, as you can see. So let me control Z. So what you actually have to do is you must build a stub, for want of a better description. And now we've built another joint. Let me just move it down. And across. So it looks roughly similar to this one. Ignore all this. This is just a visual thing that TS unfortunately does. But the functionality is the same as other packages. Okay, let's now come back to this point. Control, hold control down, hold left mouse down, drag it over and drop it here. Now you're getting this limb mirrored over to this side because it had a stub, this one, that had come off the main offshoot of the skeleton onto which to join. So what I'm saying to you is basically if you have a straight skeleton in its entirety with no shoots coming off which represent limbs, TS 7.6 has no way of knowing that this is a limb connecting point until you add this extra bit here and this bit here. At that point from this joint on it, you can make a limb because this bit is, there is an offshoot of the skeleton. Now there is another problem as well which isn't documented and it seems to be a minor bug in 7.6. It's not a problem as long as you know about it. Namely that as you can see I've effectively dragged this limb and pasted it over to this side but it's not at the same angle. 
once you've done that and you see it's at the wrong angle if you control and drag you can sort that angle out we're back to, we're back to the same two same thing okay so let's just do that again as how I would normally do it so I'm gonna del I'm gonna delete the whole skeleton and we're gonna start again so I'm gonna go do 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 uh, go arms from here. I'll take one to here. Take one to here. I want to here. Then I'll come back to here. I'll build the stub. Now I'll come over to here. In still in build skeleton tool. Control. Left mouse held down. Drag it over. Both key, both the key control and the my left mouse are still held down. Release my mouse button, and there you go. Come to the rotation widget, hold down control so that it affects the whole limb, not just the joint, and start to rotate. Now you'll see you've added a limb. Now, interestingly, once you've rotated this once, if I was to delete this limb it remembers the rotation of this joint so let me actually just do that let me get rid of this limb try it again control left mouse and drag and this time it has come out at the right angle why is that useful well basically if you were to save this skeleton as long as you'd saved it after you'd sorted out your rotation then the rotation would be kept so it wouldn't be a problem so now we've got a, a spine with two arms. Let's do the same here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my default angle for my limits to 45. So now when I go like this, we'll just do a basic leg. Now I'm going to control, hold down control, left mouse drag, and go to here. That was to show you again, same thing, it was coming straight off the spine. So it just thinks, hey, copy that straight from the point of the base of the spine. So we need a limb stub again, so I'll control Z, and I'll build my limb stub. So there's my limb stub. Oh, hang on a minute, that looks like a root. This is something you need to be aware of. That implies that instead of clicking on this joint, I've actually started a brand new skeleton which won't be connected, so we don't want that. So let's come to select, make sure I've got the skeleton selected. Now go into build skeleton, build my root, and this time you can see. It doesn't have the root sim or the root bone symbol, this one here. So now we've got our stub. Now I can control and left mouse drag over to here. And this time it will connect it with the same legs. I'm going to rotate, same as before. I can fix it manually, I've got grid snap on at the minute. Now the reason I've set my limits is I want to show you that not only does it copy the actual limbs but it's copied the limits as well so that's very useful if I was to add locks onto this leg and copy it over it would also copy the locks and all their settings if I was to copy IK handles over it would also do the same I'm going to do my little tips in and amongst the video this time rather than right at the start and my tip for you now is basically naming bones. So let's go into the shape skeleton tool and click on a bone. I'm going to right mouse click on the info on the object select and it'll bring up the info panel and this is telling me it's bone 5. This is bone 4. This is joint 4. It's very useful to be able to rename things uh, so that they're actually useful and you can visually see 
what you're working with at times in the future. So in order to change the name of this to something more meaningful, let's call it left. Because I must, this is a guy lying on his back, so this is his left leg, this is his right. Let's call it left shin. So left mouse click in the info panel, backspace, and I'm going to put shin, or calf, let's call it calf rather. Calf left. Hit return. That's not renamed. Click on the joint. I like to leave the word joint in, so I'll just do it like this. And I'm just going to put ankle left space and joint. Hit return. So I've renamed my joint, how my bone, and so on and so on. It's useful to put lefts and rights in so you know what you're looking at when you see a schematic of this in the LE panel, which is something that we'll perhaps do in a later tutorial. So you can now name your joints, you can name your bones, and if I come into selection mode, this is called skeleton by default. You can change that to my fantastic skeleton. Uh, so here it comes up, My Fantastic Skeleton, and then the options for it. So that's what it's now called. So that's just a little tip and it is useful. And personally, I would thoroughly recommend that you name joints and bones. It makes it a lot easier in the future.